Generic greetings, fellow citizens of the internet, this is of course Richard, and today I bring you another episode on the OmniSlab 0.05 server! And today things are looking quite different indeed, as you can see. Uh, you can see the villager breeder over here is still here and it is actually doing quite well. Well, currently it is fully disabled because it was doing too well! Uh, so I took out all of the doors, and it's... There's still more villagers in there than when I last left it, but that was quite some time ago. Somebody might have put the doors back in and got it up and running for a little while, but I don't know. One way or another, hopefully it doesn't crash the server. Still, same hopes as before, so forth and so on. Uh, but there are many new and interesting things going on, uh, which I've not shown on video. Uh, also, a creeper explosion greeted me when I logged on just now, uh, so... Uh, that was entertaining. I logged out right here, and I logged back on, and within seconds, a creeper blew me up. So, that was awesome. And this was, I believe, the trading hall. It is now just the hall, I guess. Uh, and the button was blown off the door and everything. It was great. Um, but yes, this trading hall is new, and started off as just a basic sort of trading line, villagers, uh, which has since been expanded into an entire building, um, unbeknownst to me. I came on and was surprised, pleasantly so, because this is awesome. But we, uh, Wreckabilly and I, I believe, if I'm not getting things mixed up, um, we worked together and made, uh, this line of villagers in minecarts, basically. Uh, it's a relatively simple setup. Um, each lever controls the track junction below it. Um, so you can choose which way the track faces, and basically direct villagers as they come in through here to go into a specific slot. And then after that slot is full, one would pull the next lever, and so on and so forth. Uh, but now they are all full, and that's basically as far as the automation goes. Anything beyond that is, you know, gonna have to be manual. But it works, and it's good for our purposes at this stage. Um, and all these chests have been added, and all that kind of nice stuff. Um, and I did a bit of breeding, uh, and trading and stuff, but apparently other people have, working, have been working pretty hard off camera as well, or at least off of my camera, and unbeknownst to me, uh, because we've got this guy who has a very nice Eye of Ender trade, um, this guy who has a Silk Touch book trade, which is awesome, uh, okay, this guy does arrows. It's nice that these guys are labeled. I wish I'd thought of that. <laughs> um, but, uh, I don't know if we've got any perfect villagers or even any fully unlocked villagers at this stage. Yeah, all these guys seem pretty new. Uh, which, you know, makes me sad because I worked so hard to unlock a whole bunch of trades on a whole bunch of villagers, but whatever. It's, it's all good, and it should be cool to, um, keep working on unlocking these guys and stuff, and, um, hopefully we'll be able to, uh, get some perfect villagers going and so forth. But already it's an awesome success because we do in fact have the villager down at the end there, which will be able to give us the eyes of Ender. We will need to find a stronghold and defeat the Ender Dragon, which is a goal of ours on this server. Hopefully before 1.7, we shall see. Um, but yes, there, as you can see, there are lots and lots of dark spots around. I am not surprised that I got jumped. Uh, I believe this is Dino Cows, giant tree of something or otherness, uh, because uh, this is where he was planning on building his thing. Uh, but it is absolutely awesome and very cool, uh, as you can see. Uh, it is hollow, you can climb up the center, and there's a very pretty overlook sort of area over here. I don't think that I've shown the Iron Golem farm in its completeness, uh, which it is at least partially complete at this stage. Uh, I think I came up the wrong side, whatever. Uh, and he's got a bed up here, so bed space right there. Uh, clumsy, clumsy. Up. Oh. Very clumsy, very clumsy. Alright, so if I can get back down again without killing myself, I will go ahead and head over to that Iron Golem farm. Oh, actually, I'm right here. I may as well talk about this. Uh, because this is something which no one on the server probably knows what it is. Uh, <laughs> this is a project of mine, which um, 
I undertook a little while ago, and which is still in its infancy, really. Uh, and I don't really have blocks. I'll use I'll use wool. That'll get me where I need to go, I think. Um, but yes, as you can see right there, there is sugarcane. Uh, I think yes, I have some sugarcane on me to demonstrate. Uh, so if that sugarcane grows, then it is harvested, and I can't tell if that actually went where it was supposed to go or not. We can check underneath. Um, that test just now told me that I really should put a side on this, because it looked like it fell down the side. Um, do another one just to be safe. Okay, so let's see. If, if this is working correctly, um, there should be two reeds in this chest right down here. Very nice. Oh, and another one just grew, so that's awesome. Uh, but yes, the general idea is that um, it's a bud switch over here. Uh, this block here is powered by this redstone, which diagonally powers this piston. When a block is updated di directly adjacent, such as uh, sugarcane growing into that space, uh, it pops out this piston when it realizes, hey, I'm being powered diagonally and that means that it's no longer powered diagonally and when this block pops out um, it makes it recognize oh I'm not being powered anymore pops back and it you know resets itself uh, and this po piston gets powered because there's a torch underneath here uh, there's a torch underneath there as well this could in fact be a redstone block but I am a cheapskate uh, so that's where that is at uh, Doop, 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 doop. And hello, Dino Cow! Mr. Dino Go Cow Person. Uh, so, yes, um, over here in this general direction, we've got the Iron Golem Farm in all its splendor and ridiculousness. Uh, it is, um,. <laughs> I don't think I'm being too rude in saying it. Uh, aha, Mr. Economist as well. Uh, oh, actually, interesting segue. I will go ahead and show a piece of footage right now from a bit earlier. Uh, actually, yesterday, day before, something like that. Uh, when we introduced Mr. Economist onto the server. So, right back. <laughs> two, two. All right, three, two, two. One. Mr. Economist, please stand on the... Wow! Screw you! Don't be mean to the Australian. He's the only accent we have so far. Oh, yeah, See, yeah, this, yeah. Sorry. This is what happens when we're not wearing our robes when we try and do this. <laughs> <laughs> Settle down, everyone. Settle down. Okay, guys, let's Council, try again. come to order. Wait, where's the cricket? All right, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Economist. <laughs> okay, we okay. We'll take you into consideration for being. <laughs> really, shut the hell up. Add <laughs> it to the Omni Slab server. Do you accept this? Yes, I do. Woohoo! Okay, cool. Let's go. Yay! Yay! Yay. So, so uh, here's, over here is the um the Iron Golem farm. It's. Right, I'm gonna um, go now. <laughs> <laughs> over here is my project. <laughs> Yeah, this is the only thing that matters. There's an O. That's the, the uh, star house. It's, um, it's, it's an. Oh, uh, cool, it's, it's gone. It's a, it's a theta that. It's actually, theta. it's pronounced like an O. It's all good. It's pronounced <laughs> like an O, but it's it's different. Okay, it's okay. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye, <laughs> like later. Everyone just keeps. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm glad we took advantage of the moment. Yes. But yes. now it is past. Welcome okay, so to there, three. There are trees here. Um, there's some chests oh, here. Right. That used to be a pie shop. It was robbed. Um, here's our village thingy. Um, there's, there's another village thingy. There's some. There's a farm for iron that's not done yet. All right. That was yes. <laughs> As per usual, pretty derpy and um, anticlimactic and silly and casual and so forth. But yes, Mr. Economist is now on the server. Welcome him. Check out his videos. He is awesome. Links are in the description. Links are going to be in the description starting from now and continuing forever uh, for everyone's channels, um, including my own for some reason when I was making that up. I don't know why, but whatever. 
Uh, also, if you would notice, there are these hoppers all over the place. Good gracious, Richard, you might ask. Why are there hoppers all over the place? What possible reason could there be for there being hoppers not connected to anything at all all over the place where... What were you thinking? What is going on here? This is madness, and I will respond to you, no, this is not madness, this is Omnislabs. Here, we don't need, like, feed the beast sort of craziness in order to have chunks loaded and chunk loading action. We use actual vanilla chunk loading. This is some crazy technology which I believe was, um, I believe it was discovered by, um, eh, somebody from the Zip Crowd server. They seemed to be the originators. If if they if somebody came out with it before them, I don't know about it. Uh, but I will probably link. I think I think either JL or Panda had a good video on it, and I will link to that. If not in an annotation here, then um, in the description anyway. If I can remember. If I have not remembered, then bug me about it, and I will fix it. Uh, but yes, that is the Iron Golem farm. It is at least semi-functional. I don't know how many cell. I don't know how many. Blah, 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 blah. Don't know how many cells are actually operational at this time. But uh, it's got at least one. I know because I completed it myself. And I think that Cole and Dino were working on the others. So, and it's been a couple days since I've been able to be on, so I'm not totally sure. Uh, but it is fully automatic there. We've got hoppers and lava and uh, golems get killed and their loot put into chests, uh, which is awesome. So let's see, what else is there to talk about? Uh, Dino said something. I have indeed. And it spawned a creeper that killed me as soon as soon as I joined in. <laughs> Light up your your stuff. <laughs> Take that. Uh so I'm a random sign. Love me, please. I I will. I refuse to love the sign. It's it's too random. I can't. I can't. I can't love it. I cannot find it within my heart. Uh. So what other changes are there around here? Plenty of changes. All kinds of changes. Uh. As soon as Mr. Economist got on the server, he and I and Wreckabilly and Cole and Dino, all of us ended up online at one point or another, and. Within, like, a couple days, the entire spawn area just erupted with farms all over the place, which is awesome. Uh, we've got this, which is a chicken drowner, uh, erected by Mr. Economist. Uh, basically, there is a stock of chickens up here, um, which apparently occasionally lay eggs that spout upwards. Um, which uh, lay eggs that get filtered down into a dropper, which fires them into this area right here. And I'm sorry for saying y'all, I've been watching too many people's videos and being influenced in ways that I wasn't expecting. Anyway, so the chickens get fired off into here, as you can see, and the baby chickens grow up to be normal sized chickens, and as long as they're baby chickens they can exist in there just fine, but as soon as they are uh, adult chickens their hitboxes change and they get um, drowned. Recording your brilliant work. Uh, so yes, uh, basically as soon as they are fully grown, uh, their uh, meat is harvested and feathers as well, uh, and that is all wonderful and beautiful. Then this is the pig farm, also invented by Mr. Economist, uh, or at least this one is actually invented by him. Uh, I don't think the other one really was. Um, it's um, I think that design has probably been used before. It's not quite as revolutionary as this one, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, as you can see up there, there are pigs in water on top. I don't know exactly. I think the design's been changed up, so now I don't actually know how it works. Uh, so I won't be able to actually explain this one. Uh, I guess. <laughs> but I know how it used to work. 
Um. Oh, I'm. I've got a carrot. I don't need to be holding a carrot where there's pigs around. Uh, so basically the way it used to work was, um, adult pigs would stand on top of these bars, and you could breed them up there. Then, uh, baby pigs would fall down through the cracks between the bars, uh, into this chamber right here, uh, where they could be killed at your leisure, uh, when they grew up. Or, if you had it in breed mode, which this I guess is, if it isn't a radically different design, um, if it was in breed mode, then a uh, gap would open up, like the one that you see here, which would allow a uh, pathfinding, uh, sort of, it would allow a path uh, to the, um, back up to the top area. And because little baby pigs want to be with their parent pigs, uh, the baby pigs would path to the, ba the parent pigs, and the thing would fill up with adult pigs. Um, and that, that would be if you wanted to just fill the thing up with adult pigs. And if you didn't want it to fill up with adult pigs, then you would just let the babies fall down here, close off the gap, and kill them when they became adult pigs. Bit like that. Uh, so that's the general idea behind that, or at least it was. Like I say, it's different now. Now there's water there, and so forth and so on. So I will probably be talking to Mr. Economist at some point, and finding out where he's going with that, and probably give you more details then. Uh, so let's see, what else, what else? Oh, and Mr. Economist was digging down here. I'm sorry, I'll stop doing it. Oh wow, he's got a bunch of stuff down here. I hope that I am not ruining anything. I will clear this with him before the video goes up, but um, I will probably let him explain it. It looks like sheep farm sorts of things. I will leave before I spoil anything. Whoop! Oh, here, courtesy of villagers. Whoop! Oh! 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 I like. Oh yes! Yes! Thank you! Ooh, you! You! Ooh, you! 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 Ooh, you! You! Very much! Yeah! That is awesome! Oh, he's such a nice guy. Like I say, check out Mr. Economist and all of his wonderful videos and projects and similar. That is going to bug me. There was a giant jungle tree here, as you might be able to tell. But someone did not get all of the leaves, or all of the, all of the wood out from the leaves. <sighs> I'll do something about that off camera, I think. But, let's see, let's see. Is the nether any different? I ha I didn't do anything in the nether. I'm wondering if there's anything new in the nether. Uh, I'll quickly check it out, and if there isn't too much new, uh, I will... Yeah. I don't know where that goes, but um, that's to um, Cole's house, as I recall, and then the blaze spawner is somewhere down someplace. And I think that's more... Well, I, actually, I will cut out and cut back in at the blaze spawner because there is... Uh, there have been some at least visual changes to how that is. So I'll be right back with further elaboration on blaze spawner sorts of topics. I don't know if I've mentioned my bow before, but it is quite a nice one. And it is actually direct out of the um, skeleton spawner. Uh, it is Punch 1, Power 3, Flame 1, Infinity 1. I just repaired it. Um, I simply repaired it from the state that it was in, uh, which was almost broken. Uh, and I have repaired it at least once since. What's all this? Huh. Okay, there's a rail line around the thing. I am not sure why. Maybe for aesthetics? I don't know. Uh, that sign basically says to AFK up here and not down below because down below you'll be out of range of the spawner. Uh, and down below, um, this cobble will have to go. Or I'm going to have to gouge out my eyes every time that I come by here. Um, same with that. That doesn't look quite as bad, but it's still, eh. <laughs> I, I, I'm, 
not a big fan of cobble in general. Uh, and there it's certainly, I, I don't, I don't really, not loving it. Uh, but anyway, so yes, this is, the interface is more or less the same, except for this, which is easy mode. Uh, as you can see, it pops out a block right down there so you can punch it to the, um, lower extremities of the blazes and kill them off that way without the need of a potion, uh, which is quite nice indeed. At this point, this is more or less the go-to farm for experience, I think, for more or less everybody on the server. Uh, people are still using the uh, skeleton farm uh, just for the drops that you get, uh, which is cool. Um, and it's definitely nice to have those drops because that's a lot of really nice armor. Uh, basically everything that I've had for, you know, armor and... Um, weapons and stuff has come basically straight out of that thing. Uh, it's incredibly useful. I had totally underestimated how useful skeleton spawners could be for the purpose of equipment. Uh, but for sheer levels, the Blaze Farmer, the uh, blah, blah, the Blaze Farm is definitely superior. And with the new villagers, um, oh, I can't wait to see how that ends up affecting how I trade and so forth and so on. Uh, by new villagers, I of course just mean the new villager setup which we have on this server and the new villager options which I have available to me as one who wants to do enchanting. For example, the Silk Touch book that Mr. Economist gave me. Oh man, that is going to save me so many long hours of enchanting trying to get Silk Touch. Ah uh, man, villagers are definitely a game changer and I love it. Uh, and I will definitely be working more with them, and hopefully uh, more in general in the future, and it's definitely going to be a big part of what we do uh, on this server in its proper form when we actually hit 1.7 and get that going. Uh, villager breeding is probably going to be one of the first things that we embark upon regardless of how things are going and how things work out and so forth. We shall see. Uh, so I am going to probably work on uh, this sugarcane farm off camera between episodes, try and get it up and running to a decent clip. Um, I don't know how large I'll have to expand it. I don't have a lot of resources to work with, but I've got some. Um, and ideally I'll want just, you know, at least just a basic, quick, you know, way of getting some you know, a trickle of additional sugarcane that can just be going all the time. Uh, and it will be running whenever there is a, um, anyone, you know, any, any player anywhere in this general area, um, it will generate sugarcane, uh, and that should be good, and it should be, should be nice to have. Um, hopefully considerably faster than this, because right now it's only got one sugarcane going, I want to get at least four going, uh, that'll be eight pistons and a decent number of, a decent amount of redstone, um, and then I'll expand it from there over time as necessary, and that will be good for trading purposes and similar, but so yes, this is, this is the big news, and goodness it is awesome. Um, I think I'll... Let me check how much time I've got left in the video and I might spend just a bit of time explaining villager mechanics and um, uh, like perfect villagers as I referenced earlier. Uh, just for those of you who haven't watched Doc M's video, which I will link to in the description if I remember to do so, same as always. Bug me if I don't. Um, I, I will I will just quickly explain it for you if you have not seen that and you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, otherwise, if I don't have time, then I may well do that next episode or at some point. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so, be right back. All right, I should have a bit more time. Um, not a lot, but a little, so I can go over at least some of the basics. Uh, so, as you trade with a villager, uh, eventually. Uh, if you if you use any one trade too much, it goes away. Uh, you can't do that trade anymore, it becomes locked. There are X's through the th Let me see if I can find one of these villagers. I know I saw somebody over here... 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 somewhere... 
yes. This guy, uh, we have traded too much coal to him, so he won't accept coal anymore. Uh, and so, incidentally, we've probably been trading charcoal because charcoal works amazing! It's wonderful, and it means that renewable resource we can use, it's awesome. Which is probably why this is X'd out, because that's a really easy way to get emeralds. Uh, but anyway, yes, this is locked, and so to unlock it, one needs to trade the last trade. The last trade is a very interesting trade with very interesting properties, um, and it will be always, obviously, different for different villagers, um, and different at different times. So this villager's last trade is five diamonds for an iron hoe. Not that remarkable a trade, except in as much as um, if you do that trade, um, if you make that trade, give him the five emeralds that he wants, you know, mm, whatever, take it for the team. Um, you don't really need an iron hoe, but do it anyway. Then he will unlock another trade, um, or he has a chance to unlock the uh, next trade, you know. This is an early trade, um, he's only got two unlocked so far, so it's pretty likely that the next time you trade this, he will in fact unlock the next one. It gets less and less likely as you go, but whatever. Um, and the thing is, there are only so many trades that um, a given type of villager can unlock. Uh, for the farmer, it's 13 different ones. Uh, see, this guy is almost completely unlocked. See, he's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 trades unlocked. And those are 12 different distinct trades that um, all farmers have, uh, with different variations, like 15 wool, others might have anywhere like 20 wool or 10 wool or something for an emerald, or maybe even two emeralds or something. They'll change up, but the emerald um, and flint and steel will always be the same. There'll always be some amount of chicken for a certain amount of emeralds and that kind of thing. Um, and if you go through all of them and unlock them all, then you will actually have a villager that will be sort of stable, if you will. Um, if you trade the last trade, you'll be able to unlock any previous trades. And the last trade, if it is fully unlocked, if that's the last trade that can be unlocked, um, it will actually sort of unlock itself. So if you trade it, and trade it, keep trading it until it locks, and then you exit out of the villager and go back into the villager again, you'll still be able to trade that because there's nothing else to unlock and there's no way to unlock that trade other than doing that trade itself, if that makes sense. So a perfect villager is a villager which has a convenient trade on his last slot. This villager has unlocked everything except a trade uh, where he trades a certain amount of wheat for emeralds. Uh, so instead of wool here, this would be like 20 wheat or something. And because wheat is really easily obtainable, uh, we can get a lot of wheat really fast. And so with this guy, with wheat on last, that would be awesome because we'd be able to just get a whole bunch of wheat, trade a bunch of wheat with him, and then exit out, wait for a few seconds, and it'll be unlocked again so we'll be able to do it again, get more emeralds, rinse and repeat, as long as we have wheat to get, and if we make a big enough wheat farm, we'll always have wheat to trade with him. So that is basically an ideal situation. Other examples of really good villagers would be um, these guys, librarians, if they have the paper trade on last. Uh, it's really easy to get sugarcane for paper. Um, or blacksmiths can get an iron trade. Uh, and if you have an iron farm like we have, uh, then you have more or less an infinite source of iron that you can trade for. Um, theoretically the same as possible with gold with a zombie pigman farm, but we don't have that. Um, I don't know if there's a particularly good trade for these guys, but... I don't know, one way or another. Um, perfect villagers are just villagers that have a trade on last that is particularly useful and that you will always want to do. It could even be something like um, trading for uh, you know diamond pickaxes. If you always need diamond pickaxes and you have enough emeralds to burn that you can be doing that regularly, then that could be more or less a perfect villager. Um, especially if you were earning enough through the previous trades and unlocking them with the diamond pickaxe trade, that it becomes worth it. That is some weird shading. Are you seeing that? There's some crazy shading going on there. I don't know what's going on there. I don't. I didn't notice it before. If it was happening before. 
Huh. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the shading there. That was strange. Okay. Anyway, so I'm probably more or less um, finished with this episode. It's probably pretty much the amount of time that it needs to be, and so forth and so on. So with that, I think I will bid you farewell for now. Later!